What's up, doggies? I have a little bit of a haul to show you here. Before I do that, I want to make a disclaimer. I have been thinking a lot about my business and this isn't some grand announcement or anything. I just want, for the sake of full disclosure, to tell you that I think my sales have been a little bit embarrassing in the past month, two months, since around Christmas. My business is just not hitting the numbers that I would like. My 30 day or 31 day total is hovering somewhere in the vicinity of three grand to, to 3,500, which isn't terrible, but it's nowhere close to where it really should be for a full-time reseller. I don't have a, a mental number of what that should look like, but I've watched other people's videos and they are just mopping the floor with me. So I feel like that's important to say from time to time. I don't wanna, you know, I've never put myself out as some kind of, you know, um, big shot, mega millions, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk uh, guy, nor uh, I hope to ever be such a person, but um, I feel like that's important that you know the numbers. And that's also context for this video. So uh, I'm, I have been thinking, it, it, my, my thinking in terms of sourcing, and I will get to the stuff soon, I promise. My thinking in terms of sourcing, my methodology has been for a while now that it makes more sense to me to buy a bunch of bread and butter stuff that will flip more quickly and work volume and focus on doing that stuff and then pick up high dollar items as I find them and then use those as spiced pepper in. And I definitely have a comfort zone where I mostly buy men's casual button down shirts. That's the majority of the stuff that I buy. I do buy other stuff as I find it, but the majority of my inventory and the majority of my focus is on that category. And I think that limits me. And I went in and I, I looked at the, the selling graph on eBay. If you don't know about that, I'll make a video about it. eBay tells you category by category uh, what clothing it's selling and not selling, and it gives you a graph, a line graph of the seasonality of each each of its major selling categories. You can break it down by brand. It's an awesome tool. Um, I went in and I checked the, the casual button down graph, and it's like the absolute nadir of, of the graph. It is at the, the worst time of year to sell it, and I had forgotten that casual button downs are seasonal. It's funny, like I've been doing this, I've been reselling for three or four years, and sometimes you just feel like a moron. Maybe you can agree. That's certainly the case with me. Anyway, the point is I'm changing, as I always do, I'm always constantly seemingly changing my methodology, but this is, I think, this is, I think, the smartest way to do it right now is I am focusing instead on higher dollar stuff, getting my ASP up, and I'm buying the quick flipping bread and butter stuff as I find it. So I'm going to basically invert that ratio of before I was focusing on the quick flipping bread and butter stuff, I would find a $100, $100 jacket here or there, but I wouldn't go out of my way to find them because I thought it would take up too much time and I would sell them when I find, found them. I'm going to attempt to switch the polarity. And I always thought that it wouldn't really be possible that the time trade-off would mean I would spend a lot more time hunting and gathering those high dollar items and that it would balance out or I would make more money just staying in one spot and, and farming out a bunch of shirts. But um, I think living in LA, that is not the case. So I, I went thrifting for 11 hours a day and I just, I, I you know, hunted and packed and I just picked up a few little things here and there. So kind of a, kind of a modest, a modest haul you know just just the good stuff just the trophies Ugh. it's not even all of it it's not a gimmick I really I really did stick to the plan I went and I got stuff that I thought the ASP would be around 30 bucks or greater generally my my target was like 20 most of the stuff that I bought I would sell at 20 to 25 or between 20 and 30 I was just looking to double my money. This is, for the most part, 
really good stuff. Really, really good stuff. And I moved around. I went to obviously a bunch of different thrift stores as opposed to one or two, like I normally do. And I just cleaned up. I absolutely murdered the thrifts today. So without much further ado, I'm gonna save this. I did go to the bins. I'll save that stuff for the very end. I would say I'm gonna to try to make this quick, but I'm not, I make no promises at all. This is gonna be a long video. All right. I, I don't know how much the total was of, of what I spent. Here is a J. Crew Italian cashmere women's, I guess, cardigan. I think that counts. Usually a cardigan, the buttons start down here. So maybe this is just a sweater jacket or sweater shirt or something like that. 100% cashmere, no flaws. About two thirds of the cashmere stuff that you find or wool stuff, period, is going to have holes in it. And the way that you screen it is these are great because you can unbutton them which makes it a lot easier. I'm, I'm too stupid to unbutton the sweater apparently, but you unbutton it and then you, you hold it out like a big panel or one panel at a time. You hold it up to the light and you look through, that's the best way and sometimes the only way to find holes. If it's not like that, if it's just a, a pullover sweater, what I do is I hold this part up to the light along the collar like this and I screen it that way, flip it over I get as much of the bottom as I can, rotate it like that. And then this middle section, the, the middle and under the armpits and the shoulders, the only way to do it that I've found is you actually put the sweater over your head like this and you angle the fabric around and you go slowly piece by piece. And a lot of the time that's where the holes will be, will be in the shoulder seam or under the arms, and that's the only way to do it. You will look really, really stupid, but that will save you a great deal of money. And this was the first Goodwill that I stopped at. This is kind of my home Goodwill. This is a nothing brand, but it's a denim jacket with embroidered flames on the sleeves, gray denim, in pretty, pretty, pretty good shape. And it costs 10 bucks. And I figure I can get 40 for that. Another one that I just looked up on the fly. It's apparently nicer stuff. This is a long shirt dress. That's where it looks like a t-shirt or a button down shirt, but it just goes and goes and goes. Those are shirt dresses. Also, this is asymmetrical, I think. Asymmetrical hem. See how it's not even or it's pointed. If I am wrong, please correct me. I'm not an expert with women's clothing at all. It's its own realm of, of knowledge that I am not totally fluent in. So this is just the stuff that I picked up as I went. It was nine bucks. This, if I am remembering correctly, could sell for 70 to 80 bucks. Realistically, I don't know. Total for this Goodwill was 25 bucks, 97 cents. Usually I come out of that Goodwill with a, that's, that's usually the haul videos that you see is from this one Goodwill that's down the street from me in Westlake. Um, so it was really, I, I felt weird coming up with just three items. Okay, moving on. This was something I bought on Instinct more than anything else. It's from the studio store, Warner Brothers. On the front, it looks like just a nondescript red canvas jacket, but it is a piece of memorabilia from Rebel Without a Cause. It has been a long time since I saw this movie, and also it's in black and white, so I don't get the red thing. I don't know if this is a James Dean jacket that he wears in the movie or what. There's one active that's selling new for 67, but I think it's selling in Europe somewhere. So I don't know exactly how much I'll get for this. Probably I will list it at 50 or 60. We'll have to do some more research. That's another 10 buck item. 
This one was $2. Another gut check. <laughs> uh, it's from Mudboy, everybody's favorite rapper that you've definitely heard of. Two bucks, that'll sell for 20. Total from this one was $28.96. Not done yet. Did that smell like cigarettes? No. I never thought I would actually find this again. It's Violent Gentleman. This has been in a couple, two, three of my vids. This is a hockey sweater. Violent Gentleman's Hockey Club is obviously a hockey club. And here is the logo. This does have stains on it. Little pink red stains quite a few of them, but this stuff is in really, really high demands. I found four t-shirts and they all sold within a month. This was seven bucks. Um, something smells like cigarettes. Um, so that was exciting. This is a wool coat, pea coat. It might be new, because it's got this thing. It's a wool coat. I got it for 10 bucks. I don't remember what the numbers were, but it was, I believe, above 100 for this brand and coat, or there was a potential for, for that amount of money. It does have a lot of pilling, so I'm gonna have to do some work with this guy. I don't even know where I'm going to put this stuff. Um, all right. I have to sit my signature. My signature tea. I didn't plan for this to be cute, but it is. I'm exhausted. All right. I think that was it for that Goodwill. Sorry, I'm <laughs> hallucinating. Um, okay, this has been in a few of my videos. Black Craft, it's a decent t-shirt brand. It says fuck Nazis on it. So someone who's going to take a, a bold, brave, unusual stance against the Nazis is gonna to wanna to buy this for potentially 40 bucks because I could not find any any such t-shirts on eBay. And if they are not currently actively on sale new on the website, that means they are discontinued. And this is very much something that will sell for potentially more than you would think. And I got this for four bucks. This thrift store, the stuff that I'm showing you now, it's not a Goodwill. It's an out, out of the closet, which is an AIDS charity, HIV AIDS charity, um, that is typically really, really pricey, but they, they run dollar tags on older inventory. So purple tag means a dollar. Just going forward. This is a cool brand that I haven't found in a while. It's a vintage brand and they make these bowling shirts that are really good sellers this is a a really kind of i want to say cool but it's not my style at all i do not actually think that it's cool but um <laughs> it is it's neat this is a neat bowling shirt vintage bowling shirt in really good condition this red this will definitely sell i got it for uh six bucks and this will probably sell for for more money than you, than you would think this will probably sell for 40 or 50 bucks this was so very, very dope. If you are unfamiliar with this label, join the club. I just learned about this, having flipped through hundreds, if not thousands of Ralph Lauren pieces. And having seen this label before, I learned watching um, College Picker, I don't remember his name, watching one of his, his brand breakdown videos. Apparently this is one of the highest end Ralph Lauren tags and this pained me to learn because I remember seeing this more than once. And this looks like 
a very bottom shelf tag for some reason to me. This, this looks like almost a kid's brand tag, but it's Ralph Ralph Lauren, the two R's, the two R's with the L. If you ever see this, this is super valuable. I think this is actually even better than purple label stuff or black label stuff. So this is just a basic thermal shirt. It's got that textured waffle knit thermal fabric. Also could call this a Henley and I will. This is worth 50 bucks. Unless I'm completely whacked out on the research. Got it for nine, which is a lot. I promise it's nine. But um, I, I was, believe it or not, I actually smiled when I, when I found this. And I found, this is the second one that I found. The other one had a hole in it and I almost still bought it for nine bucks because of the tag, but I, I felt that would maybe be a bridge too far. So I went through all of the shirts trying to find other stuff from Ralph Ralph Lauren, but I, that was it. But I found a bunch of other stuff. Actually, this one's for me. This is Theory, which someone told me is a good brand. This is a, uh, I think, merino wool sweater that makes me look very, very handsome. So this is for me. It totally made it right where I wanted it to go, I promise. Of course, you know Robert Graham. Robert Graham stuff is kind of like Lululemon. It is not a blockbuster in the way that it used to be. It used to be able to flip just basic shirts for 40 bucks. The the really top dollar Robert Graham stuff will be the all over crazy vomit inducing patterns and the bright you know neon stuff with the flip cuffs and the flip collar. This is more basic, more muted. I would be surprised if I got more than 35 for this, but it does have a, an unusual pattern to the fabric. If my $500 camera will focus. Come on, buddy. It's really cool. And uh, you just have to take my word for it. It's a 2XL and I got it for seven bucks. And by the way, for as enormous as this haul is, I don't think we're even halfway through yet. I could have gotten probably at least 50% more stuff, if not twice as much stuff, if I was just buying the stuff that I normally buy, the bread and butter shirts. I found a bunch of them and it pained me to leave them behind, but I did. Here's another one. This is a wool sweater and I almost didn't buy it because I've heard people say that the sweaters don't really sell and the numbers are not out of this world, but um, it's eight bucks and I figured why not? It'll probably sell. It'll probably sell for 30, 40. And true to my word, if I find something bread and butter as I go, that's too good to pass up. It's one of those brands that's my unconditional buy one of my unconditional buy brands. Of course, I'm gonna get it. This was six bucks, guaranteed sale. I say that not lightly. This is a guaranteed sale. Unless I price this at like a hundred bucks, someone's gonna buy it. Cool is awesome. Uh, the total for the, and I'm not done with this thrift store yet. Total is 88.50. This brand is Staple Pigeon. It's a streetwear brand. You can see the pigeon in the P. Staple Pigeon used to be a lot more popular than it is, but uh, it still sells. I've only found two pieces from them, but they both sold very quickly. And it's, I believe, 100% sell through on Staple Pigeon shirts. This was an orange tag, so I think this was 30% off of seven, whatever that is. And this will probably flip for 30. This is something that I buy when it is really, really cheap. This is a 3XL linen blend, Cuba Vera or Cuba Vera shirt, short sleeve shirt. And it cost a buck. 
And I don't know how much I'll flip this for. I didn't look at the numbers. I would say probably 25 at the absolute max. More realistically, maybe 20. Cubavera is not a, a super amazing brand. Uh, I think this is, I've certainly bought less than 10, fewer than 10 true religion pieces ever. And I typically don't buy jeans at all. I, I don't buy pants whenever I can help it, which is a, another whole long ambling conversation. This is a pair of true religion jeans that I got for $1. And this actually, believe it or not, was kind of a margin call because it's got some staining on it and the cuffs are worn, but couldn't say no. Couldn't say no to True Religion for a buck. This was huge. When I first started watching reselling YouTube, this was the shit. Everybody bought True Religion stuff and it got the old YouTube treatment and got totally blown out. So the market is not what it used to be. This one was exciting. I am not familiar with this brand, but the numbers hopefully do not lie. This could be worth a hundred bucks. This is a knit wool sweater. It's hard to find an exact match on this. And I went thrifting for 11 hours. So my brain is a piece of shit right now. And I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but I think, I, yeah, I think this was over a hundred bucks potentially used. And I got it for 70% off of eight. Okay, let's just do the coats. Oh boy. Okay, this is from a different thrift store. This is probably the most expensive item of the day. I spent 30 bucks on this. It was an educated guess. This is a very long, heavy herringbone wool overcoat with a velvet collar. Here's the brand, which is much less significant than this, this tag. This blurry mess of a tag. First time encountering this, I looked it up and something about the numbers told me that this thing I can, with clear conscience, probably price this around 200 bucks. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. It's really nice, conspicuously nice. It's got a dry cleaning tag on it, so it's clearly taken good care of. And, oh yeah, made in England. This is a made in England piece. So spent 30 bucks on it. A little bit of a gamble there completely kind of a stab in the dark but again wanting to push my comfort zone and also break through the $99 price point mental barrier that I have because I very rarely price anything above 100 bucks so that's gonna be one of them <laughs> maybe my favorite piece of the day I've said it once I've said it twice do not sleep on big dogs yeah, Big Dogs isn't a, a seriously an awesome brand if you find the right stuff. So I, I had a Big Dog shirt in another video where I said, don't sleep on Big Dogs. And it still hasn't sold, but it's because it had a bunch of flaws with it that I didn't notice. And it's out of season. But this, this is a 3XL fleece zip up, which is really not common. Big Dog stuff, most of the stuff you're going to find will be either the t-shirts the Attitude t-shirts or the Hawaiian shirts. The Hawaiian shirts sell really well and they sell for better money than you would think. They sell for 25, 30 if you can get one of the bigger sizes, but this, there's not a whole lot of track record for these fleeces. It will assuredly sell. Don't know for how much. I think I spent 10 bucks on this. Yeah, 10 bucks. The camera was being weird there. All right. This is a good brand anyway, but this is some kind of specialized 
I think NYPD specific cop jacket. It's an insulated law enforcement jacket. I got it for eight bucks and I'm not clear on how much this is actually worth. And now that I'm looking at it, I think it's missing part of it. I think it probably had a sweater or like a hood or something because that zipper goes all the way around. So I don't know exactly how much this is worth. That'll reduce its value, but potentially, I think the number is said like 80 bucks, probably at least 50. All right, this was unbelievable. Sport coat. It's a gray plaid with a shot of yellow in it. Here's the cloth. And here's the tag. This is a higher end, I think, higher end Brooks, Brooks Brothers tag. The Madison is the model. It's a 45R and it costs a dollar. I got this for $1. I didn't even bother to look at the numbers. I don't know how much they're gonna be. Probably 70, 80 bucks at least. And I got it for $1 because I am very good at this. Here's a vintage Polo Ralph Lauren navy blazer. Gold button navy blazer, all wool. There's the tag. Got it for a motherfucking dollar. Here is what is called a letterman's jacket or a varsity jacket. That is leather, this is wool, and it's from West Point, the military school. Got this for 25 bucks, and I have reason to believe I can sell this for around 150, maybe more. We'll see. Okay. I think we're over the halfway point. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. Not the best Ralph Lauren tag. Lauren Ralph Lauren stuff is almost entirely women's, if not entirely women's, and it's lower end stuff. Not that being women's reduces its value at all, but this is a double breasted navy blazer wool with this embroidered patch on it. Four buttons, got this for 10 bucks. These are worth around 50. 40, 50. And look who it is. I found another one. This is the same brand as before, Staple Pigeon. You got that bird right there. This is a color block chambray shirt. Color blocking is this. It's where there will be a block of color that is contrasted with another block of color. Very good keyword to use. And chambray is like denim but when you flip it inside out, one side is not lighter than the other. So it's basically denim, but it's woven differently. The neighbors are aroused. Um, seven bucks. I thought I would never buy this brand ever again. This is a Tommy Bahama silk or silk blend, 5XL Hawaiian shirt. It's got this textured, almost knit silk. That's really heavy and high quality. Couldn't find anything wrong with it. Got it for 10 bucks, which is a little bit more, but uh, this should sell for, for quite a bit more than 10. 5XL. And here's another one, another Tommy. Bahama, this is a 3XT, so it's a 3XL tall. 
and the numbers on this are also good. I don't remember what these are selling for. I think minimum is 35. This is another $10 shirt. And number three, same deal. This is a, what was it, 3XT? Yep, 3XT shirt with a pattern on it, unusual pattern, and this was, is it 10 bucks? Yep, it was, it was 10 bucks. I'm gonna speed up a little bit, be merciful. Hugo Boss typically fetches less money than you would think. This is an unstructured linen blazer. So this is 100% linen and unstructured means the shoulders have no reinforcement at all. There's no padding in here. And 100% linen unstructured blazers or sport coats or jackets, or whatever you want to call them. When summertime rolls around, these are super in vogue right now. These are in every single men's fashion video of uh, the top top items every guy must own. This is one of the top ones. So people have been trained to buy these and they do. Um, let's see. And I got a book about writing for myself. Okay. This is actually a bolo. This brand makes women's dresses and blouses that are kind of themey, and they tend to be worth more than 30 bucks. I don't think I've ever actually pulled the trigger on it though. I've run the numbers a few times, but everything that I found had flaws with it. But this is a cat print blouse, and it's actually, it's actually kind of charming. It's all cats, and then right there, there's just one tiny little mouse on the whole shirt. I checked over the whole shirt. This is the only mouse. Uh, I thought that was funny. And this cost $4. And this will probably flip for $40. Uh, this is among my very favorite brands. Plaid flannel. This stuff sells right away. And it sells for more than 30 bucks. And I got this for seven bucks. Actually found another of those but I didn't pull the trigger on it because it was a little dirty. And what do you know? It's our old friend, Tommy Bahama. This is a very large 100% linen shirt slash jacket. I'm not sure which it actually is. Uh, it's either a very lightweight jacket or a heavyweight shirt. Got this for seven bucks. 100% linen Tommy Bahama stuff has pretty high sell through. Okay, um, all right, and we're down We're down to the bins. So I, I popped my nose into the bins and I thought, I'm just gonna look at the books and then bounce out because I'm really tired. I ended up staying until last call. Uh, so I got, I got this. I don't know if I regret this or not. Um, but this, for some reason, just made me laugh a lot for like 10 minutes when I found it and uh, it had to be mine. This is for me, the Great Advice denim shirt that I'll wear as I dispense great advice to you. Uh, just a very basic Levi's short sleeve plaid shirt. Uh, the total was like 20 bucks. This probably cost a dollar. Hopefully the other one of these is floating around somewhere. This is a semi beat up woven leather pair, hopefully pair of fries, of fry loafers. Uh, let's see if I can give you the the logo in there. This is a really good brand of shoes and boots. And I was surprised to find it in the bins. So this probably cost around $3. This was great. Um, 
I was making conversation with another person at the bins because she had some of these sitting on top of her pile of books and I was telling her about how I used to read these as a teenager and she came back around uh, before she checked out and she gave me a, a few of them. So that was really nice of her and these are great. I think I actually got these for free. I don't think they actually bring these up. So another item for me. Got another book about writing. It cost a dollar. Here's another Levi's plaid. This is a pearl snap shirt. This will probably flip for 15 to 20. But I got it for real cheap, so a big return there. Just another single shoe. This is disconcerting. This is a, there's a C missing there, a pair of Vionic sandals. And I've never sold them, never bought them, but I've seen them in other reselling videos talked about as valuable brand so these are really lights so these actually probably cost like a buck and a half or something it's around 250 a pound here's a banana republic half angora half wool sweater at the bins i found it really pays to look at the label and use your fingers because people pass up stuff like that they're moving so fast they just don't pay attention to it it's a brand I actually used to buy and then stopped buying because the value tanked a little bit. English Laundry is, I don't know, just like a mid-tier, not a crazy high seller, semi-valuable thing. This is just a pair of um, chinos, textured chinos slash jeans for men. Here is a vintage Sears plaid flannel shirt. No holes in it. Don't know how much these are worth. Probably around 15 if I had to guess. 15, 17. This is a new with tags Forever 21 100% linen pair of women's shorts. Borderline free. They weigh nothing. Okay, here's the other fry. Here's the other bionic. We're safe. We're good. There's a pair of Lucky Brands, Lucky Brand chambray pants, drawstring pants. Remember what I said about the color? See how they're the same color? You can also tell chambray because it'll have more visible white threading in the fabric. I don't know how much those are worth. <clears throat> And last item, merciful sweet release for you. You can finally go watch someone else. Sorry, I got distracted. Vineyard Vines in the bins with a little spot of distressing that I didn't notice until two seconds ago. It's the club pant. That means chinos. And these men's, women's. Men's. Vineyard Vines. Who knew? We're done. Thank you for watching.